Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and today, these are these guys aren't new, but we are hosting XRP Cafe. I'd love to start out with giving just a brief introduction between both of you guys, who you guys are, and really what inspired the creation of XRP Cafe. Yeah, for sure. So I'll go first. My name is Chris Troya, and I run business development on the cafe. Like the origin story behind XRP Cafe is there is this one marketplace that everybody was gravitating towards pre-XLS 20. And unfortunately, that marketplace ended up going away. So then Moonkey actually reached out to me through DMs and was like, do you guys want to start a marketplace? We had no intentions on doing so. And the rest is history after that. Nice. That's amazing. It's great to hear. And it's definitely something innovative for the space. And you also come in as that competition, two of those competitors. And if you find those ways of innovating, making yourself unique and standing out beneath the crowd, it really puts you in the best spot. No, 100%. Yeah, definitely. And I'll just introduce myself as well. Steve Shipley, um, otherwise known as Stove Online. And yeah, member of the cafe team. It's pretty cool because we had ran an NFT project for about a year previous to starting the cafe. And that's what got us to make friends with everyone in the community. And that's a really big part of what we do at the cafe is we take all consideration from the community. And these people are our friends that we've been working with for, like I said, basically over a year now and almost two years. We're really fortunate to have such a loving community and yeah, we're focused on helping the community grow. Amazing. I kind of want to start things off a little slow and I know you guys probably have asked this, been asked this question many times before, but why do you believe in the XRPL? So number one, I guess on the creator side, it's a new market. So let's say you're a creator coming in with minimal budget it's super easy to gain traction, showcase what you're building on the ledger. In comparison to ETH, Solana, you need a decent amount in the war chest to be able to even penetrate any levels. And then on top of that, within the XRPL and Force Layer 1 royalties, so as you saw in the past with Magic Eden, OpenSea, allowing NFT investors, if you want to call it that, to choose how much in royalties they want to pay, 25, 50, 75%. As a marketplace, we have no control over that. So on the creator side, it's super, super easy to get into. And then on top of that, you're always going to get those royalties at the end of the day. And then for the community side, again, the XRPL is such a tight-knit community. Pre-XLS 20, you had yeah. hundreds of people supporting these projects without a tangible asset that they could actually purchase. And it went like that for the year plus. So I don't know. I haven't seen anything yeah. like that on any other blockchain. That's a great yeah, point. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely. We've all also held XRP since about 2017. So that's how we met some of the people on our team. And that's what brought us together as well. So we're big in XRP and we believe in the technology as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that. The technology is so strong and structured that it's, it's if you blow past that and you look over it, you regret it in the long run, of course. But yeah, yeah. besides that point... What are the goals for the marketplace in the near future? What do you plan on adding to it, making it unique, making it stand out beneath the crowd? Because I know you guys do have some com competitors on XRP being one yep. of the top ones. Maybe a competitor, maybe a friend, whatever it may be, you still want to compete at the end of the day. So what do you plan on bringing to on X uh, XRP Cafe to make it? Number one, our main focus right now, you see a lot of places attempting the cross-chain move before actually gaining 100% market share within the current chain that they're from. So our main goal right now is just to build, you know, the best marketplace for the XRPL community. And then if we do want to expand cross chain, we'll look at it at that point. But you know, in terms of features, auctions, I don't want to go too much into detail because we do have some cool stuff coming. Yeah, I could glance over it. So AI integration within the marketplace. Adam's nice. digging a little deep on that. He actually had a presentation at Apex where he went over like, a soft use case on how AI can benefit a marketplace and or NFT collections, you know, be on the lookout for that. And then on top of that, just, you know, trader mode. So if you go to Tensor on Solana, they have the standard mode and then they have the more degenerate trader mode where you get like in-depth data and details, something along the lines of that. And then we also have a fun feature coming that doesn't really provide any value other than smiles. Steve, I'm pretty sure you remember that. It's it's going to be called meme mode. So you'll you'll see that in the future. Nice. Hopefully the team doesn't hate me for saying that, but I don't know. I'm known I'm <laughs> known for leaking stuff. Known to leak. 
Hey, we love leaks on the Alt Kings, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think not, AI I mean, integration oh, is big ahead. in this space, especially if you're able to find a way for the marketplace to adopt it as well. I'm going to be really excited to see what you guys pull off with that because AI just constantly continues to evolve in this space. And it's what can you produce? Anything, really. And it can really do a lot and it continues to get smarter. So that's quite exciting to hear. Yeah, no, Adam's super obsessed with AI right now and um, super excited to see what he has cooking. And, you know, when I can share a little bit deeper, I will. But right now, I definitely got to keep the hands <laughs> up a little bit. <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> So have you had something to say by chance? Yeah, yeah. Chris uh, talked a lot about like the functionality within within the uh, the marketplace, but like on the community side of things, we're always looking to obviously promote and grow uh, the marketplace. But like Chris had mentioned before as well, the XRPL is a very tight knit community, and it's relatively small compared to other chains. So we're also focused on actually growing the ledger, onboarding new projects, onboarding new creators, whether they be already in Web three or be web two creators as well. So we go to a lot of conferences and IRL events and stuff like that. And just tell people about the XRPL because there are a lot of XRP holders out there that have no idea that there are people building on the ledger. They have no idea that there are NFTs on the ledger. That's really big for us is growing this ecosystem. Nice. Yeah, I've definitely seen you guys at a lot of these events just on your social media profiles and stuff. What's been one of your favorite events so far? So personally for me, I would have to say... Apex was definitely amazing, but consensus just because it wasn't, you know, an XRP centric event or Ripple. We were the only XRPL project there and Ripple X was there oh. and that was basically nice. it. So being able to have conversations with people that are building on other chains and everybody would walk past our booth and I, I, we did this on purpose. There was absolutely no text on it other than like V cozy in the top. So people would be walking by like this. And then we'd be able to engage in a conversation and they're like, what are you guys? We're like, oh, an NFT marketplace on the XRPL. And 90% of the people had no clue that there were NFTs or again, like Steve said, building on the XRPLs. And it, it being able to have those conversations with those people and like showcase what's going on over here. And again, just because the community and pre-XLS20, I've again, never seen anything like it before. And it's, it's insane, honestly. So yeah, consensus for me. I don't know about Steve though. Yeah, I mean, I got to agree with you there. Consensus was definitely probably the biggest event that we attended. And we obviously had the booth as well. We were um, there from eight in the morning till about five at night. And there was a constant stream of people coming to, coming up to the booth, asking us what we were doing. Like Chris said, asking us about the XRPL and stuff like that. And we literally, by the end of this event, we all had lost our voices. We had spoke probably hundreds, if not thousands of people. So it was huge for us to network and, and build relationships with people that we've been speaking with online for, like I said, about two years. And this is the first time that we get to see them in real life. So people were taking pictures with us and we were meeting friends for the first time. So it, it, it's it's really cool to build these relationships for, for so long and then finally shake hands with the people in real life. It's pretty n nostalgic. Oh, 100%. I'd say. It just... It brings oh, yeah, it all definitely. full. It's like seeing There's Solomon, we're always in his spaces. And when are we ever going to yeah. eat Solomon? And then at Apex, he's right there. And then we had an absolute blast with him and Valor. So it yeah. was amazing. And it was also the yeah. first time that we got to see Two Cakes, who's also on the team, and then Adam in person. So it's it was uh, it was a really cool mm -hmm. experience because, again, get to meet the your Web3 team that limited option, limited yeah, chances to meet. Point. And then on top of that, like Steve said, within the Twitter spaces and social media is like never expecting to meet any of those people and being able to do it was amazing. Yeah, definitely. Onboarding and adopting to the mass can be one of the biggest challenges that we face in the XRPL and in some other chains as well. What would you say some of the biggest challenges you guys are facing right now in development at XRP Cafe? And so I would say our, our biggest challenge right now is time. We're all still working our nine to five full-time jobs. Yeah. It's it, it does suck a little bit. So Adam and yeah. Tippy are two developers. Tippy does front end UX UI, and then Adam is back end. And being able to have them set up their day where they can still exceed in their nine to five position, and then on top of that, stay competitive within this quickly changing environment. That's number one for us. And then number two would probably be just getting people over here. Again, we're in the middle of a bear market. Everybody's losing money. 
Yep. It's tough to change someone's mindset and bring them over to a chain that, again, mm -hmm. absolutely love the XRPL, but there hasn't been like a pure winner yet in terms of a board ape, like a D gods or a Utes. It's we're not at that stage yet. So when you talk to people, you're like, oh, come over to the XRPL. They'll go to stock to it's and look at the daily volume chart and be like, you guys are on the right side. We're only investing on people on the left side. There's ways around it. So for onboarding, you know, um, going to the events, number one, and just going cross chain, like almost doing door to door sales. So brute forcing your way into their community, not chilling though, and actually like learning what they do and how they build their projects. And then on top of that, just interacting with everybody. I'll join communities, not even talk about the XRPL, just learn about the project. And then, you know, within my Discord bio, you'll see XRP Cafe, Park, and stuff like that. So then that will engage questions. And then that's where I'll do a little soft shill and hopefully bring people over. But it's been working. It's been working. Smart if everybody approach. does it, one person a day, this XRPL will be a winner. That's a great point. And regarding Stockwoods, XRPL is, I saw on the daily volume, Within the past couple of days, it was like 40,000 in NFT volume in a single day. And it was at the top of that right side. Oh, so so close. close to that left side. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, so close. Yeah, no, de definitely a little bit of a tick in volume, uh, which is good. A lot more creators coming over. I can tell you from the launch perspective on the cafe, there's tens of maybe 20 projects a day trying to mint with us. And, you know, we actually can't keep up with all of it. So we have a really cool feature coming here soon where... It should, you know, help those creators and have almost zero friction with the cafe team. So, nice. That's awesome. And I like the approach to uh, going cross chain. I think if you go cross chain, you branch out there, just put your name into their space, and you try to provide some sort of value, whether it be something small, something large, whatever you can provide. Not necessarily regarding XRP Cafe. Just some personal value. It can be anything. People resonate with that stuff, and then it's going to stick with them, and then your name's going to stay in their brain some way, shape, or form, and they'll not forget you, and then they'll be exactly. interested in you. And so I'm just making that small impact, regardless of what it may be, just putting yourself out there can really make or break a lot of big things, and especially with adoption. No, 100%. Really and yeah, God, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll segue, but it's it's also super important to learn how other chains operate as well and what creators are doing with their projects. Go over to, into these Ethereum Twitter spaces and see how they run their mint day and stuff like that, or see why they make their collection some type of way or how they run their, their Discord community. And then you can apply those things to your project if you're a content creator, just learning from other chains as well. Your network mm -hmm. is your net worth. Yep. I'd love to say that. That's it. Yep. Yeah. We might not have projects like Board Ape Yacht Club or Utes on our chain just yet, but we do have projects like Park, XRP Junkies, X Shrooms, that are some of the most underrated projects, I think, in this whole entire NFT ecosystem to speak. I'd love to know, what was your guys' first NFTs getting into the space on the XRPL? So on the XRPL, hold on, let me just open up my wallet right now. On the X. I on know, the XRPL, tough. correct? It is not, tough. Not anywhere? Yeah, specifically XRPL. What was your first NFTs and or what was your favorite so NFT project? So my first to NFT make. that I personally minted outside of Park was Monkey. Absolutely loved the nice. Pixel Monkeys. And he made them absolutely yeah. cute as hell. Now, of course, this is my opinion, not financial advice. My favorite project, I would have to say, is the rude boys just because of their community and the art so the art is amazing there's a lot of nft projects out there that try to overcomplicate things and make it they like toss the suits on try to make it more legit than it actually is we got to bring it down to a level where we're just trying to build community provide cool art and then if there is utility in the form of like tech or anything else that's awesome but personally i don't i honestly don't care about utility when it comes down to it but when you go into the Rude Boy server, there's absolutely no filter and everybody is real. There's no one, oh, trying, oh, I'm smarter than you because I do this and that. Everybody's in there telling each other to F off and just have fun. And I had the chance to meet them at Apex and they're just like great down to earth people. And I, I like the art as well. So Rude Boys and Monkey. That's awesome. Yeah, the art is really nice. Steve, I don't know about you. Yeah, as, as far as the first one that I minted, I think it was probably an X Shroom, or maybe it was a monkey as well. 
And it and the, and Chris had mentioned this before. These projects and the ones that you just mentioned right there, like the Junkies, X Rooms, Monkey Monkey, they've been around for two years and they were building initially with no form of income. Basically, they had we had these IOU tokens. We didn't have the NFTs, and you know these projects made it through that bear market and yeah. eventually we get the NFTs and they're still hanging around. It's really cool to see these projects build for over the course of two years and stick around. That's huge for me. But as far as like my favorite projects, I, I can't really put you know a favorite on them. I try to, every project that I like, I try to grab a couple NFTs from and just diversify my wallet. I definitely hold a lot of projects yeah. on the XRPL for sure. Support's key, I think, regardless of who it may be, as long as you're there showing up, supporting in any sort of way, I think that really helps and makes a difference towards these project founders who might not necessarily get all that support that they desire right out the gates. They got to work for it. In that token phase for the XRPL NFTs, after that, once we were able to actually mint them, it was nice that Ripple came out and started actually giving out grants to these projects, building real things for the space. And I think that also helped expedite a lot of these sort of expedite a lot of this sort of these processes that people are trying to you know develop out and everything that goes into whatever their vision may be and so i think ripple stepping in providing grants to real projects building real things really help and that's like going back to a point that you brought up with with what steve said these projects building for a year without any income for example the junkies they're building an absolutely amazing game with almost zero outside funding and that's that has to be spoken about like you go on other chains and you have all these projects saying oh we're going to make a video game and then they make four million dollars on their mint and then they release a game that is from 1990 and then you have a project like junkies that (laughs) absolutely no money or maybe like minimal funding and then they're releasing this voxel art style game that is playable and actually fun. For example, the shooting range. I played that for probably six hours. And it's just sitting there shooting the gun up and down. But it was smooth, fun. I, I have no complaints, but I, I think people should start realizing that the XRPL NFT side of the community is... I They put the community first rather than money. Where, in my opinion, on other chains, because there's so much money, that kind of is first for you as a project rather than the community, even though people will say that community is first, but I don't know. The XRPL is a prime example of we don't need money to actually build what we want to build. We have to build a strong community and then long-term the money will come. And that's, again, that's, it has to be talked about. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great point. And regarding XRP Junkie specifically, they they were spending five figures a month just in game development to expedite their vision. That, and that doesn't and that's all come out easy. of their pocket too. It doesn't come easy. I, I think they won one. <laughs> People don't realize that shit, man. And oh, it bothers me. It bothers me. You're not me a multi millionaire so to fund your own project. What? It's like, oh Literally. god. It's rough. But besides the point. What are some of these benefits people using XRP Cafe to buy and sell NFTs may receive compared to other so, marketplaces? Is there any specifically or that stand out? Number one is definitely our speed, where, again, probably the fastest marketplace out there from point A to point B. The only reason why I know that is because I use every single marketplace and I go, all right, how long is it going to take me to get from homepage to finished? And our, our load times just absolutely beat everybody out. And then on top of that, the liquidity. So we have the highest amount of offers in comparison to every other marketplace combined. So as a creator or a NFT investor, being able to buy and sell on our platform, you have a higher possibility that your sale will actually go through rather than any other platforms. As for like reward, rewards, tokens, we're, we're staying away from the tokens. There's no need for secondary token. We, we can use XRP. Might support IOU tokens for certain projects in the future, but don't quote me on that. But we do have something cool coming. Again, can't speak on it, but I'm not, I can't go any further, but go, go check out Watch a marketplace. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the marketplace on Magic Eat. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can we cut this? Um. <laughs> Yeah, we can't no, if it's, it's necessary. You don't, you don't have to cut <laughs> no. it. But yeah, just we have some cool things that will get people involved with trading on the platform that will keep them coming back daily. But it's not going to be in the form of a yeah. like a 
actual tangible token. Yeah, smart approach. And, and to, uh, to add to that, another two things: our customer service is really huge. We have a team of eight people, so if you come into our Discord and create a ticket. Basically, at any time during the day, there's usually someone from the team that's on that's able to help you out. And if they're not for some reason, you can drop it, some, a question into our Discord. And we have a super active Discord community, which is also really cool. If you go into our general chat, there's always someone in there that's willing to help you out. So that's pretty big. And then another thing is promotion. So if you're a, an NFT creator and you're releasing a collection on our marketplace, we always put together some type of promotional thing for create for project creators. And we have some good engagement on our Twitter that always helps out people that are yep. minting on our platform. Nice. I have to say, though, I'll be honest, when I joined XRP Cafe Discord and I had to create a credit ticket, it took about two minutes for them to get back to me, and I was pretty <laughs> upset like, with how long it took. But this oh, one-star one like, one uh -oh. review. <laughs> but now, you guys' hospitality in that server is great. You guys are all very welcoming. And I, one thing I also do like, what you mentioned, Stove, is how you're willing to support these projects about to launch on your launch pad. And it might be a simple tweet. It might be a simple shout out in the Discord. It, it just it moves those creators and it makes them feel a little more appreciated rather Definitely. than just launching, not getting really any exposure from the marketplace. And mm -hmm. that looks can be deceiving, but at the end of the day, if they don't have that sort of secondary sort of marketing from another person, it can hurt their morale and not necessarily excel their mint as exactly. expected. So things like that are always great to see. And then and also one thing on the project side, when you are a project coming to mint with us, you're going to be more or less working with Moonkey in terms of going over the metadata. And I just want to point this out because Moonkey puts in 120% effort when it comes to actually helping you mint your project. So he'll actually look through your metadata and help you fix yeah. an extra space, a period, underscores, literally anything. Like OCD, it's actually insane. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's he wild. Perfects your metadata. And for you. the Necessary. thing is, these projects really cool. are very happy because Mookie, again, he doesn't enter into your project. He just wants your project to be like he wants the launch to be as good as possible because it makes your project look good and it makes us look good at the end of the day. And also you go to metadata, you don't want just like a single text with 30 traits on it. You want it nice sectioned off. This is the head, this is the body, whatever you have. So shout out to Moonkey and also shout out to Vet because they don't sleep. And like Steve said, you can reach out to us at any time. <laughs> Vet's in Germany and we host our Twitter spaces at midnight his time. And sometimes they last two, three hours and it's like, how how do you do this how do you stay <laughs> yeah how do you, how do you stay sleep? up yeah shout out to ven monkey for sure those guys are legends in space monkey's been really great help with any sort of questions and concerns i might have regarding the launch pad and he was just very adamant about expediting the whole entire process at a much efficient rate as well as a rate where it's everything's getting done properly it's not like anything's being missed he's actually very he's very detail oriented and so that helps mm -hmm. out immensely I'm curious to know you uh, now, what do you guys think of the future of NFTs? Specifically on the XRPL, uh, I'd say. But so in on the XRPL, well. we're going to have our day 100%, as you saw. So what we saw, at least on the cafe side, once the SEC lawsuit, XRP isn't a security, that happened a couple months ago, we got flooded with messages of people saying, how do we launch a project? How do we get NFTs? So that was like our first taste into what it could potentially turn into. So I think long term, once the markets start turning around, these these investors within the NFT space, they're going to look for their opportunists at the end of the day. So new markets that haven't had that haven't seen a bull yet. And you look at the XRPL NFTs have only been out for a year. We've been dancing between 10 to 30 K in volume for that last year. So it, it, we look pretty tasty to an investor um, super early coming into the space now. Yeah, I think we just need the markets to turn around and then all NFT scenes will do good, especially the XRPL. And with our legal clarity, I think it's uh, it's going to push us up a little bit for, uh, further. I think we're going to do better than Solana. 100%. I think we'll be a top 100%. three 100%. NFT sort of marketplace as well as ecosystem, hopefully by the end of 2024, if the economy yep. is there. But uh, I think everything the XRPL has to offer is pinpoint perfect. And especially with that ripple clarity within the SEC and that lawsuit that went on. And thankfully, Judge Torres 
put down the hammer and smacked Gary Gensler in the face, and we called it a day from that. But besides the point, it's nice to see, and it's a matter of time, I think. And I think that's a matter of time as well, like for chains like Hedera. Hedera is one of those chains similar to XRPL, where they're very cost-effective, very fast, very time-effective as well regarding transactions and transaction speeds. And it's just a matter of time before the mass really clicks in their head that, hey, I don't want to spend $200 on one transaction on ETH. I don't want to wait for the network to be back up on Bitcoin or Soul. And it's... Oh, it's personally for me, People if I'm buying an NFT on Bitcoin, like I can't wait an hour plus to get my NFT. No, I need it instantly. No. And no. yes, it, it is pretty instant. But again, like you do 50 transactions during high gas times trying to mint out like a big collection. Like that's going to be expensive. I don't know the price right now, but I remember during the bull run in 2020, it was like gas was average like 350 and it's like $75 per transaction. It's like there's absolutely no shot you can have me Man. do more than two transactions where I wouldn't like look at my wallet and go on that. They had this one website where you could put your wallet in and it would show you how much money you spent in gas and like people were flexing how much money they burned. And it's like, I remember seeing this one guy, it was like $500,000. It's like, what? Like how? That's just well, it's all priced okay in. It. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Is yeah, the the big players are are fine with that, but the that that just makes the barrier to entry for little guys coming in so hard to get into. So yeah. it's like now you have to think about oh, I have two hundred dollars to spend. I should be getting let's say five NFTs, but I can only get two mm-hmm. because of gas. Great point. Um, yeah, I think it's more or less like a the rich person sort of ecosystem. Only rich yeah. people can really afford to play in those spaces, so it's got to have the exactly, money to make Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'd love to dive into a little more of the current state of the NFT market. And as an NFT marketplace yourself, you got to stay on top of the trends. So what are some of the biggest trends in the NFT market right now that you guys are seeing and picking up on and approaching? So from the marketplace point of view, what we saw early on was just going back to the token point. You had JPEG store release a token, Blur release the airdrops and just other marketplaces releasing the token. And we're just the reason why we're staying away from that is just based on the community reaction that those marketplaces received. It's, for example, JPEG store. The token did decent and now it's down like 90 percent like you look at the chart and it's just like this and it it just leaves a bad taste in people's mouths when you have a token it's down so much and you still want them to use your marketplace that just gives an opportunity for a competitor to come in not release a token and just have a nice fleshed out marketplace and take total market share so being able to see that before we even you know started building was perfect for us because at the end of the day we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and who knows the tokens could work, but as of right now, just based on the current case studies that we've seen, they don't. And you could also get hit. We're from our business is based in the U S <laughs> so we got to stay, we got to yeah, yeah. operate by the rules. We can't, I can't have Gary yep. knocking on my door. <laughs> no kidding. I don't think anybody wants Gary. Cause if you get Gary, you're going to get exactly. the Simpsons with it. And, and then on top of, oh, <laughs> yeah. sorry. And, and I was going to go say ahead. on top of that, just going off of Blur and Tensor, just like the amount of data that they provide for users and like Soul Sniper, just like cherry picking some of those cool data points that they provide, charting for NFTs for those people that are going to be investing a decent amount of money. If you're buying one NFT, you're not going to look at a chart or are we at the bottom or are we at the top. But when you're spending thousands of dollars, you want to be able to see that those points. So just looking at more fleshed out leaders and seeing what works for them, what the community likes, and implementing that into our marketplace. Not copying them, but just taking inspiration from them. Yeah. Everything comes from inspiration (laughs) at the end of the day. Somebody's going to get copy and pasted in some way, but it might be sprinkled on with a little bit of their own sort of personality. But I think that approach can really go into not only just NFT marketplaces, but NFT products as well. There's so much being built on chains like Soul and ETH that hasn't been touched on the XRPL yet, that people could literally start tomorrow or today by maybe maybe copying, pasting another project in slightest ways or concepts, but they can bring these things to the XRPL and be unique in their own ways overnight. 
and people need to start thinking about those things whenever there's a lot of functionality that we're missing out on the xrpl and i feel like a lot of people are gravitating more towards building a marketplace rather than building out these other use like these other like these features that we really do need automated launch pad we're a year in and we don't have one so that's if people want to come in here and make money that's like a huge money maker right there because frictionless minting whitelist capabilities that's huge but again i think it just comes down to the lack of developers and developers that are coming over from evm they want to see the money and thirty thousand dollars a day in volume isn't enough money for them but it's it's just a long-term yeah. game at the end of the day but i just wanted to t- yeah because regardless of price yeah. you got to think about xrp price long term man no, we haven't even touched it. We haven't touched a dollar in God knows how long. We ran up to 96 cents and it was like, no, oh, we're going back down. But one thing one thing I want to say nice. about what's coming to the marketplace, sure. um, this is something new that I we haven't really seen any marketplaces do. You know, some marketplaces host like weekly Twitter spaces, like we do the same, but um, factoring in Twitch and hosting these like wide scale community events, when we were looking at how marketplaces somewhat interact with the community, they're very suited, no memeing. The only marketplace that I've seen to actually post memes is Magic Eden. And like they do it, they get the community interaction, they have fun with it. But we went a little bit further and we're hosting almost like quarterly, like cross chain events on our Twitch, which again, just like builds more of a relationship with our audience, being able to see who it is and then factoring other projects from cross chain and it's been working out really well for us. We average roughly 100 viewers every single stream that we toss up, every single event, which again, people might, oh, 100 viewers, that's not that much, but like the average Twitch streamer gets like three viewers. So it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that's a good amount. You guys have been at yeah. that for a while. I remember when you guys were just doing live, three, live streams through Twitch yep. with Park. And that was that's where I assume you guys probably learned your expertise within live streaming on Twitch and you gained that knowledge and you're able to really migrate that to xrp cafe as well the Great real sauce hear. yeah that, that was huge i for said us. The, the real Go sauce ahead, was me and steve used to make easter egg videos for nazi zombies so that's <laughs> yeah. nice. oh my gosh nice. yeah we, we yeah, were doing was... content creation back in middle school in and those days i'll tell you what we wish that we stuck with it because luckily it came back around and, and we had all of these things we had the green screen we had the microphones and all of that stuff so we had all the stuff we just didn't have a means to use it and then we found out live streaming and just like you hosting these podcasts it's a great way to, to meet new people and that's how we personally met all, a lot of these projects in the xrpl and a lot of these projects are are using the cafe right now so that was re- really big for us and to also touch on these these large scale events the community always meets us halfway and the xrpl has been absolutely amazing we host these these events and a lot of them are charity events for saint jude children's hospital so i think all together the xrpl has raised and all of these other cross chains that have participated in the events have raised over sixteen thousand dollars us dollars for saint jude and we actually found saint jude's we actually met St. Jude representatives over at Consensus. They knew us by a first name basis almost. So we went over to their booth and we were talk- we were talking with them and we actually got their XRP address. So we were able to run an event where we had their XRP address and people were allowed to directly donate XRP straight to St. Jude. So that was pretty huge for us. That's amazing. And especially just the concept behind supporting charities of any type. In the past, when we minted our first NFT collection, I took a portion of the funds and just gave it to a, a local charity that was focused on the homeless in my area where I live. I live in near St. Louis, and so homeless are pretty prevalent in majority of major cities in the United States, unfortunately. And so mm-hmm. just being able to do that, it felt good at the end of the day. And things like that, whenever you're able to just warm up your heart in the littlest way yes. as possible that's just the best and it's super easy to do everybody can do it yeah there's like literally it's, exactly and it doesn't take Even much like a either. dollar no, making that really connection doesn't. and then a couple dollars yeah. it doesn't have to be yeah. much like no one's gonna donate yeah. shame you if you donate a dollar it's like that's a dollar that's like a dollar literally. more than no. they had before so it's every bit counts yeah yeah we'll get a hamburger from mcdonald's with exactly. that dollar and give it to a homeless there you go straight up that's a little huge. things it's you little know things. yeah Exactly. 
Let's talk about the future. That's where I wanted to end this podcast on. Where do you see NFTs evolving into the future? So there, I, in my opinion, they're definitely going to move. So the image aspect is always going to be there. Like, you know, being able to have a PFP yeah. that kind of resembles something that you align with, that's always going to be there. But I think we're going to... So 2020 was like the introduction to NFTs for the general public, like spoon feeding them. Hey, you can buy pictures and they're tokenized and stuff like that. Now we're at the phase where regulations are coming. Now you're going to have these huge corporations looking into how can we utilize NFTs within the real estate market, real world assets, transportation industry, and stuff like that. So I think maybe within the next five years, we're going to actually see utility in the form of like enterprise use cases for these Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies. I work within the transportation industry and I'm like trying to come up with ways like how can a truck driver utilize an NFT? They have these paper copies for their MC licenses. Yeah, they have it on their side of the vehicle, but at the end of the day, they could lose a piece of paper. So I, I just think it's going it's to move away from the pictures and go into, you know, making everybody's life a little bit easier. And if you can save somebody 10 seconds every single day, that's going to add up and you have a million dollar idea right there. Yeah. Think about having your personal driver's license on it. NFT or your social security wanted if you think about it it's so much more secure than just keeping it in your day-to-day -day wallet because that mm -hmm. can be, be stolen that could be lost especially if you're on a, a strong chain where your keys are safe and secure you're not worried about those being lost or tarnished and I think yeah like you said it's going to really start to be adopted more by larger companies larger corporations and they're actually going to bring real world values back to the market and then that's going to spike, hopefully, the future's volume and No, 100%. There's always that trickle effect with the big boom of the internet. It was like, yeah, everybody was like, they heard about it back then. And then in, what, 1999, 2000, it actually blew up. And then it was huge. Yep. So everybody's saying NFTs are dead, crypto's dead, blah, 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 everything. We had that. In so if we follow that trend of the internet where people are like, it's not going to survive. And then long term, I, I have a computer in my pocket now. Literally. I, I think 2020 was that introduction, 2019 to, again, spoon feed everybody. And now this next run is going to be a little bit more meaningful, in my opinion, in terms of actually solving problems rather than just representing pictures as your profile. That's a great point. History repeats itself. Yeah. That's it. Man. Now, my final question for you guys is simply, what are the plans for the future of XRP Cafe? What do you see, plan on taking this within, say, the next year, the next five years, and so, so on? So I would say within the next year, our main goal is to push our developers full-time, even if me, Steve, and everybody else out on the team has to do our 9 to 5. The amount of work that our developers put in, our main goal is to make sure that they can focus on the cafe full-time so we can stay as competitive as possible. And that's one of our strong suits, being super flexible in the sense that we have no outside investors. So we don't have to go to a board meeting and with all these features and say, can we please do this? We can do whatever we want when we want. So our technical flexibility is absolutely amazing and we need to keep that. So main goal, push the developers full time. On top of that, continue to stay the number one XRPL marketplace and just build out an overall completed marketplace in the sense we're hitting both markets, art collectors, degenerate traders. And then once we do that, maybe expand cross chain, but only if it's viable. Is there a point for us to go to Ethereum? Are we going to be able to compete with Blur or OpenSea who have been pure winners for the last 20 years or however long? So just need to make sure whatever move we make, it's calculated and it's correct. But yeah, that's in my opinion, the, those would probably be our goals. I don't know about you, Steve. Yeah, you, you nailed, the, nailed it right on the head. But just to close, grow the community. And Chris had mentioned this before, door-to-door -door sales, going to as many events as possible, spreading word of the ledger. This isn't just us promoting the cafe. It's, it's trying to literally bring people over, show them what we have, show them what we're building on the ledger, and just try to get them to come over. So that's what we're going to focus on as well. Amazing. I look forward to seeing it all. And all I have to say is consistency is key. 1% every day is going to really get you to those goals that you desire. And regardless of wanting to branch cross chain or not, I think you guys are going to do big things. Any closing thoughts? I appreciate you guys once again for coming on. And it's been a true pleasure to be able to host no, you guys thank once you for again. for having us on. And again, let's do this in a, in a year from now and see what's going on. <laughs>
<laughs> at this point, we're always down. So it's Amazing. always a pleasure. And, and, and like you said, consistency is key. And that's what you guys are doing as well. You guys are always putting out great content. We were looking through your YouTube channel today and we saw you guys are getting into the shorts and all and of that. Also, so, yeah. Um, keep yeah, up the what replies, you guys are doing, I see you guys Appreciate hitting the reply. Lot. I'll go too. You guys are farming some impressions. There you go, gonna... man. So there you go. Regarding that. So yeah, I was <laughs> reply game for a whole month straight, just constantly <laughs> consistent with it. And it was working out really well and I could stick with it, but I was pushing the wrong market, man. I was just pushing the content, the banter market, the Logan Paul Dylan yeah. Dan's bullshit <laughs> fight coming up. I was just trying to be on the hype train and stuff. And it worked out because the, mon- the monetization threshold is 5 million impressions in three months, 500 followers and a verified account. At 5 million impressions, I'll tell you, it can be a mountain to climb when you're a smaller creator in the space. But if you do hop on those trends, man, it can pay off. And I got it in a month. But I plan on slowing down on the horse when it comes to banter comments and stuff like yeah. that. But, but it was hey, fun you while hit what you wanted to hit. Now you're going to pump the brakes. But you're right. So now the sky's the limit with monetization payouts exactly. and stuff like that. No, but yeah, see, like you exciting. grinded it out. Nice. Like I was thinking about doing that and then I'd always forget. But like you did it. So that's huge. So once you get it, you're good? That's Pretty much. Thing. That's oh, okay. my wow. understanding of it. I don't know if Elon will you know, <laughs> slash my account say, oh, you didn't say consistent <laughs> with it, buddy, or some shit like that. But... We'll see. But on that note, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure hosting you guys once again. I look forward to everything that continues to be developed out by XRP Cafe. And ladies and gentlemen, if you like this episode, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you all next episode. Peace. Nice.